At the end of this lecture, you'll be able to create a web app like this one using React. The idea of this web app is simply to have two buttons and a spam which will display a decimal value that can be decremented by clicking on the button on the left and incremented by clicking the one on the right. This lecture will teach you how to set up a React project, how to use components, and what states are. Now before we jump into the subject, we'll have to install some tools. The first thing you'll want to install is obviously an IDE, and the one I recommend is Visual Studio Code. Next up, we'll need to install Install Node. Node is basically a way of executing JavaScript code on your desktop, a bit like Python for example, though Node also has two other things we'll need in order to work with React. One being the Node Package Manager, or for short NPM, which is basically a package manager centered around JavaScript. And the other one being Node Package Executor, or for short NPX, which is what we're gonna use to create our React project. Now the installation for the Windows users is pretty straightforward. All you have to do is go on the link that is in the description description and just click on the LTS release. Now all you have to do next is just proceed with the installation. Don't have to worry about all this, just click next and you can proceed with the installation. Though I'm not going to do it since it's already installed for me, but you should be fine with the rest. Now as for the Linux users, it's a bit different story than the Windows users. Of course you can install the node package just by typing your package manager install node, but as for the other dependencies such as npm and npx, they won't be packaged with node. You'll have to install them as separate packages. Now there's a last thing that only the Windows users will have to install, which is git. I say only the Windows users, because while Git is a really useful tool that even Linux can use, in this case only Windows users need it because Git integrates something called Git Bash, which is basically a terminal emulator for Bash. And I recommend Windows users to install Git with it, because first off, Git is included with it, and we will need this terminal emulator if you want to follow my instructions correctly. Now just go on the link in the description and click on Download for Windows. Now as I repeat, only the Windows users have to go through this as I explain. Now you can just select git bash, make sure that's selected, otherwise there's no point at doing this. Now that all the tools are installed, we're ready to set up our first project. First thing you want to do is open up Visual Studio Code and head to the Terminal tab and create a new terminal. Now as for the Windows users, you'll want to add a new terminal of the type git bash. You can close the older one and I recommend going into the directory in which you'll want to create your React app. I'll go into my documents in my case. Now what you'll need to type is npx create react app and give a name to your app. Make sure it's in lowercase and doesn't have any special characters or numbers, otherwise create react app will complain. In my case I'll call it setup. Now what I like to do is add the folder to the project into the workspace of Visual Studio. You can do that by clicking on the file tab, add folder to workspace and head to your project which in my case is into documents and it's named setup. Just click add and if everything goes fine, you should see all these files in your project. Now go into the src folder and open up index.js. I'm going to try to explain to you how React works a bit without going too deep under the hood because another video will be dedicated to this. Okay, so what's really important here is as you can see there is a counts root here at the line 6 which is equal to create root from document get element by id root. And if you go into your index.html inside of public folder, you can see this element of id root is right here and this is where all the React code will be well rendered into. Now if we come back and let's see that. Now if we come back here, as you can see, it will just do root.render and rendered all the stuff here. What's actually important here is the app, which is actually a component. As you can see, we added this component as I explained in my past video. We add components into HTML just like a basic tag, at the exception it has a uppercase as a first character. It's imported from the app.js file, which we can go into. 
and sure enough, this is just a function that is exported as a default. Now, if you look to the code, all this function does is return some HTML, which as I said is what we call JSX because we can mix JavaScript in it. Now it, we can now remove this content here and I just want to show you something called states. React has a lot of these states and we can import them by just doing import putting brackets and the first state I want to show you is called use state. Every state in react is prefixed with use and something. That's a kind of trick you can use to memorize them. In this case we're going to create this state by just doing const spreading and putting the name of our state then a callback function which will be used to set the value of our state. In this case, I'll just call it set state. And you have to equalize it to use state and provide it a default value, which will be used as well a default. In this case, I want it to be a decimal, so I'll put zero. Now, if we try to render this into our JSX, we can just put two brackets like these and then name the variable. And in this case, it's the state. Now we can launch your, re launch your React app by heading into its folder and doing npm start. Now this should automatically open in your browser, but if it doesn't, just head into localhost 3000. Now as you can see in the middle of my screen here, there's a zero that appeared and sure enough, it's our value of our state. So if I change its value to five, for example, it will apply. Now you might be wondering, well, why are we using state? I'm going to try to build out an example for it. Let's try to create a button, all right? Give it a name or provide the text in this case, uh, we'll call it test. It will appear to the screen, you can click it, nothing happens. Now we'll create an arrow function which will be used to handle when this button is clicked. So we'll call it handle button or just unbutton. Now what this will do when we'll click it is set the value of state to zero. And in order to know when this happened, when it's clicked, we just have to do an event listener, which will do on click is equal. Now these two brackets and the name of your callback function, or I mean your arrow function, sorry. And in this case, it's on button. Now, if we click on this button, as you can see, the state was set to zero. But why don't we just use regular variables, huh? Why don't we just do instead of using this state, let's do a regular variable like that. Let's call it, well, test. And we'll put its default value to 5. Let's comment out the set state and just do test is equal to, well, 0. Now if we refresh and click on the button, nothing happens. And basically to explain that in the simplest way, React how it works is it won't re-render the DOM, the document, inside of the user screen except when you use the, the set state callback. If you just set a variable, of course it will be executed in the JavaScript, but nothing will happen because you're not telling React to re-render the document content. So if we even try to do a set state and we try to set the value in order to re-render this document, even then, nothing might happen, and I just made a mistake, um, sorry for that. I forgot to replace my state with uh, test. Now I'm just going to do that again just to prove my point. And as you can see, it doesn't do anything. But now let's try to, well, set that state. You see, the value is still not changed. And let me explain. Because when we set the state, sure thing, React will re-render the DOM but it will also re-execute most of the component's JavaScript because it's part of the, the component. So it will re-execute this test is equal to 5, so reassign 5 to the test, even though it was assigned 0 here. So it kind of override the 0 here and it's still 5. So that's why it doesn't change on the screen. So it's pretty much why we use states in React. Now we can try to create new components by simply going here and creating a new file. Let's call it um, count. And don't forget to put the .js. Now you can export default a function, which will be your component. We'll call it count. Don't forget to have an uppercase. 
Now just like a function it takes this and we'll also pass it a special argument which will be called props. Now we won't get into it right now but let's just try to return some, some stuff from this count. Let's put a div in it and let's put a basic spam which will have a zero in it or just call it count more. Feedback. Now you can import that new component by just doing import and then the name of your component and from the name of the file of your component. In this case it's count. You can remove all of the older code I just made if you wrote it. And let's try to render that component to the screen by doing just like a regular HTML tag. And as you can see, it did render count, so that works just fine. Now let's try to make it have two buttons in order to increment and decrement a state, just like in my first example at the beginning of the video. So let's import use state from React and create a state with it. Give it a name, in this case I'll call it count, and I'll provide it a callback of set count. Now let's provide it a default value of 0 since it will be a decimal variable with decimal values and let's render it to the screen using these brackets. Now before I continue I just want to show you that these brackets can execute any JavaScript code really. For example if I put count plus 1 in the, these brackets it, will, it should render 1 because it will be 0 plus 1 and as you can see it does. Let's remove the plus one since it's just an example, but you could put really anything and it, it would render as it will render the JavaScript and show it to the screen the result it returns. Now we might want to, now we might want to add two buttons in order to increment and decrement this um, count. So let's create two buttons and let's give one the name deck and the other one the name enc for decrement and increment. Let's add them a callback on click and what we'll do instead of creating an arrow function outside of this uh, on click, let's put it inside of it just for the sake of being cleaner. Now what this on click will do, you don't really have to put the brackets since it's not going to return anything. Let's do a set count. Sorry for that, my ID is kind of, kind of going crazy. Um, okay, now that's fine. Let's do count minus one. So we're going to set the value of count to count minus one. So just decrement it. Let's copy and paste that in the other button. And in this time, let's increment uh, the count. Now if we go back in the browser and just try to decrement and increment, as you can see, it works just fine, just as expected. Now let's try to add some CSS to it, shall we? To do that, you can create a new file and call it count.css. We'll give it a class of type count, of name count, sorry, and just use the conventional name, and we'll make it a flexbox. Give it a gap of, let's say, 10 pixels, and why not also adding other stuff such so we'll try to center it by using a basic technique by putting it as absolute it's just basic css it doesn't really matter if you understand it or not as long as you know what css is obviously and let's try to transform it Trans that's just a little trick you might not know to center stuff in javascript and sure thing it's not centered since we didn't give it um, the class name and as you can see when we add classes of CSS we don't just use class we use class name because in JavaScript class is already a keyword and if we just use class it would give us an error so let's see what it uses and as you can see it didn't apply to CSS because now we got to import this file so let's import it we just imported with dot slash and we gave it the name of count.css, I think. And now, as you can see, our CSS applied. Now, I just want to get into the props a little bit. I don't want to go too deep since it's already a long video, but let's show you what it does. 
So basically props is an argument and what if we want to set a default value when the user opens the web page to the state? We want to give it a default value that of our choice. Well, we can provide props dot something and in this case I provided dot um, default and it will give us nothing because we didn't provide this prop. We didn't, we, there's nothing in prop.default and as you can see prop is an object. So what we can do to provide this default value is go here and in order to provide a property you just give it a name, in this case default, put it in equal sign and add two brackets. Now you can put any value you want and in this case I will put a 5. And it should render a 5 by default and as you can see it works. I just realized I made some mistakes and yeah so it, it just works just fine. And so the idea behind props is just to be able to pass values to these functions or slash components as if they were just functions because you can reuse them then and there's no problem with that. I tried to create one with a 5 and one with a 10. As you can see they overlap themselves because that's how I programmed the CSS but you can clearly see there's two components one on top of the other and if you want we can remove one of them and sure thing there's the one under it and it works just fine. And that's what's really neat about React is that you can create these HTML functions quote unquote which are components that can render with JavaScript and all the HTML bundled together. It can just improve the way you program globally your web applications and become less repetitive. Now we're reaching the end of this lecture. I know it was really long but you have to understand that the idea of this lecture is not really to teach you anything. It's just to get you used with the React environment so that in the next videos or slash lectures that I'll make you won't be lost when I'll do a bunch of things in a shorter fashion. Now I know this video is like 15 minutes but as I said the next videos will just be 5 to 7 minutes. My goal in the series I make on YouTube is to keep things really short and I'm kind of mad at this video for being so long but it's kind of a must for people to set up all the environment correctly and just give a first impression. But in reality this video could have just been 5 minutes if I just removed the part where we actually program. But you know, I don't want people to just be lost and not know what to do when I'll get to the real stuff.